hearing of the Subcommittee on Securities, Insurance, uh, and Investment will come to order. Thank you all for joining us. We're very uh, honored to have the Chairman of the full committee joining us as well. Uh, and uh, working with Senator Scott uh, on uh, issues that we both care about before the committee. So, uh, and we appreciate our colleagues being here as well. Uh, just for a few housekeeping uh, details, this hearing is in a hybrid format. Our members are in person, but we will have witnesses testifying both in person and by video. For those joining remotely, a few reminders. Once you start speaking, there will be a slight delay before you're displayed on the screen. To minimize background noise, please click the, the mute button until it's your turn to speak or ask questions. You should all have one box on your screens labeled clock that will show how much time is remaining. And if there is a technology issue, we'll move to the next witness until it's resolved. Now to the uh, hearing at hand. Thanks to the Biden administration and the American Rescue Plan, the country is well on our way to defeating COVID-19 and restoring the promise of our economy. We put shots in arms, money in pockets, provided billions of dollars in relief to hard hit businesses. However, we still have a lot of work to do. The pandemic has exacted a heavy toll and we owe it to the more than 600,000 mothers fathers, sons, and daughters lost to COVID-19 to examine how we can better prepare ourselves for similar challenges in the future. I know that imagining another public health crisis of this magnitude is an unpleasant exercise. However, in today's interconnected world, the question of the next pandemic is not if, but when. This pandemic unleashed havoc throughout our economy, Across the country, businesses suffered massive losses as a result of stay-at-home orders and other containment measures necessary to slow the spread of COVID-19. During the height of the pandemic, 74% of all small businesses reported falling revenues from the previous week, and small businesses' ownership dropped by 22%. In a state like New Jersey that was particularly hard hit at the onset of the crisis, 92% of small businesses experienced revenue losses and 41% temporarily closed. These losses were particularly concentrated in minority communities and in certain industries such as restaurant, leisure, and hospitality. Most small businesses were not able to obtain relief through their insurance policies. The National Association of Insurance Commissioners found that of the 8 million businesses with commercial insurance policies that included business interruption coverage, 83% also included a clause excluding claims from viral contamination, disease, or pandemic. Unsurprisingly, 82% of claims have been closed without payment. Businesses instead relied on federal programs. In New Jersey alone, 84% of small business owners applied to the Paycheck Protection Program, and 58% applied for the Economic Injury Disaster Loans. These statistics suggest that our national insurance system was ill-prepared to cover the losses incurred by businesses in this crisis. Therefore, I believe it's the duty of Congress to analyze how we can better insulate businesses and their workers from such losses in the future. My hope is that this hearing will be the first of many discussions on the lessons we've learned from the pandemic and how we can build a stronger, better prepared, more resilient economy. A robust debate on this topic has already begun in the business and insurance communities. Today, we'll feature testimony on potential frameworks to manage and mitigate financial losses that may arise from future pandemics. One of the topics we'll need to address is the basic question of insurability, either by public or private entities, of pandemic-related business losses. We must determine the extent to which businesses, private insurance providers, and the federal government are able to share the risk of losses due to a pandemic. We will also examine a number of pandemic risk insurance proposals and frameworks put forward by business coalitions and the insurance industry in the wake of this crisis. Each presents different ideas on how much risk is borne by the private sector versus the federal government and the approach to paying, paying claims. So I look forward to hearing from today's witnesses about the merits and challenges of the various plans. Your insights will help Congress grapple with the challenge of better preparing our economy for future pandemics and taking steps to ensure our businesses are not as vulnerable to economic shocks as they were to COVID-19. Thank you to all the witnesses who will be appearing, and I look forward to your testimony with that. 
Let me recognize my friend, the ranking member, Senator Scott.